started this section on visualizations that are used to show relationships or associations or correlations in our data. And we started with the scatter plot, uh, where we have a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. Now, in today's episode of the video series, we are going to talk about the parallel coordinates plot, in which we have two or more vertical axes only. And as Martin Lambrex is going to show you in today's video, they can be both complicated and as a good way to explore your data. So I'm going to hand it over to Martin so you can learn more about the parallel coordinates plot. Hi, my name is Martin Lambrex and I'm a data visualization consultant based in Belgium. And I would like to tell you a couple of things about parallel coordinate plots. Parallel coordinate plots are a very powerful data visualization technique, but they won't work for all data sets and uh, in all circumstances. And you have to pay attention to some of their design aspects to make them work. So why are they powerful? Uh, parallel coordinate plots allow you to plot multiple dimensions of your data at once. So you can plot 10 or even more dimensions into a single parallel coordinate plot. And on top of that, Parallel coordinate plots allow you to plot a lot of records of your data. So you can plot thousands or more records of your data into a single uh, parallel coordinate plot. So they can pack a lot of data, um, a lot more than what you could um, possibly do with bar charts or scatter plots, for example. You won't see them though in the news, for example. They are not very common. You can find them in research papers or embedded into interactive dashboards. Um, and this has to do with the fact that they belong to the realm of exploratory data visualization. So they are a great tool to explore your data, um, to get familiar with your data and spot interesting things in your data. They don't lend themselves very well for explanatory data visualization. So how do these parallel coordinate plots look like? Um, let me show you. This is a parallel coordinate plot of the well-known CARS data set. Uh, the CARS data set contains a couple of hundred types of cars. And for each car, the data contains uh, measures like the miles per gallon, the number of cylinders, the displacement of the engine, um, for example, but also the year cars were built in and the country of origin of um, all the cars. So this parallel coordinate plot is using eight dimensions of the car data set. And um, each type of car is represented by a line uh, connecting the values of that car type on each axis. You can also see that the lines are color coded. And if you look over here on the right, you can see that the color coding is based on the country of origin of the cars. So what can we learn from a parallel coordinate plot like this? Um, first, you get a sense of the distribution of each dimension. You can see where lines cluster together. Um, this is where it, the distribution is the, the densest. You can also see that we have some continuous dimensions here in the middle, um, while we have discrete dimensions like the number of cylinders. And we also have categorical data like the country of origin. Um, we can also spot outliers. For example, there are only a few cars which have three cylinders and from the lines uh, connecting there on the number of three on the cylinder axis, we can see that these are all Japanese cars. They are um, colored in orange. But there's more to a parallel coordinate plot. If you look uh, at the two axes on the left, the miles per gallon and the number of cylinders, you can see that in between, we have a lot of crossing lines, which means that high values in one axis are correlated with low values on the other axis. Um, so this is a way of spotting negative correlations in a parallel coordinate plot. If you see a lot of crossing lines, then um, you have a negative correlation between dimensions. If we look at the cylinder axis and the one on the right, the, the displacement axis, you can see that there are almost no lines crossing each other, which means that um, high values are correlated with high values on the other axis, which means a positive correlation. So that is what you can um, see in a parallel coordinate plot. You can assess the distribution, spot outliers, um, see whether you have continuous or discrete data, and you can also see correlations between dimensions. 
Of course, each access can have at most two neighboring access. So you can only um, assess the correlation between one dimension and two other dimensions. So this is a limitation of the parallel coordinate plot. Um, and it also points to an um, important aspect of designing um, parallel coordinate plots, which is the ordering of the axis. The ordering of the axis determines how the chart will look like and what you will be able to get out of the chart. So ordering is uh, crucial in parallel coordinate plots. I've mentioned that parallel coordinate plots are often embedded into dashboards, and a lot of parallel coordinate plots have interactive features like tooltips, for example, uh, to identify each line. Uh, this one has uh, a feature called brushing. Um, so you can scrub the axis, and um, with by doing so, you can highlight um, different um, elements, uh, different records in your data. So they act like um, kind of filters. So for example, if I um, brush the axis containing the origin, uh, the country of origin of the cars, and then I can highlight the cars from the US, from Japan, and you'll notice that um, the cars coming from Japan have a much more smaller uh, engine, so not a lot of horsepower and, and displacement. The same applies to the EU. Um, and then if I, if I combine this brush with another brush on the uh, year cars were built, we can see that even the cars from the US don't have big engines when they were built at the end of the 70s or the beginning of the 80s. So this is the effect of the oil crisis um, in the cars data set. So this is basically how parallel coordinate plots work. You ar arrange the axes next to each other and you connect the values for each record. Um, and um, as said, you have to take um, care of the ordering of the axis, otherwise it might end up um, as a mess or you won't be able to get anything uh, inside for, from the chart. So let's see some design variations and related uh, data visualization techniques of um, parallel coordinate plots. Um, in the previous one, we used straight lines, um, but nothing keeps you from using curves. It might improve the legibility of your parallel coordinate plot. Um, it might also not be, um, but nothing keeps you from uh, trying it out. And of course, nothing can keep you from rotating a parallel coordinate plot and have the axis um, horizontally instead of vertically. This might um, fit your screen size better or uh, might fit better into your dashboard, for example. So this is also um, a variation on, of the design of parallel coordinate plots. Here we have a parallel coordinate plot um, combined with uh, something what is called an alluvial diagram or sometimes called a Sankey diagram. And to show you the relationship between those two visualization types here, the alluvial diagram is used for the categorical columns in the data. Uh, like gender or the, the risk category. Um, and parallel coordinate plots are used for the continuous variables uh, in the data. And then finally, I would like to point you to a very interesting article by Kai Chang on parallel coordinates. A couple of years back, uh, Kai had a very interesting talk about parallel coordinates. And um, he collected all his insights um, into the visualization type here on this page. So um, he dives into the uh, rearranging of the axis, for example. So you have an interactive module on the site um, in which you can rearrange the axis and you can see how that affects the general aspect of uh, the parallel coordinate plots. Um, he also talks about opacity. Um, if you have a lot of records to plot, then you probably need to adjust the opacity of the lines to keep your chart legible. Um, and then finally, he also dives into the um, design variation of using curves. And he adds to that um, a bundling technique. And let me show you how that works. Um, so if I slide the bundled strength to the right, you can see that the lines will be grouped together in between each pair uh, of axes. And here the bundling is done based on the number of cylinders. 
Um, so within each pair of axes, the lines um, for the cars with the same number of cylinders kind of get attracted to each other. And this is a way of um, assessing the correlation between the cylinders dimension and all the other dimensions. Um, so you can get quite creative with um, the use uh, or this, when designing parallel coordinate plots. Um, and the bundling is one of the techniques that you can play with. <clears throat> okay, so a final thought here is um, that there are other techniques for showing multiple dimensions at once onto a single visualization. And one of the more common ones is the radar chart or the spider chart. Um, and in essence, the radar chart is nothing more than a parallel coordinate plots where the axes are arranged um, in, a, in a circular way. Um, this is not optimal. It uh, makes reading values a lot harder and there are a lot of other arguments against radar charts. Um, so what I suggest when you are tempted to use a radar chart is try out the parallel coordinates technique and just rearrange the axes next to each other or um, from top to bottom. Um, so I took the data from this radar chart and uh, turn it into um, a parallel coordinate plot with the axis running um, horizontally. And now this data is a lot more readable than it was on the radar chart. So I hope that I've been able to show you the potential, the power of parallel coordinates, and also that I uh, showed you what to uh, pay attention to when designing them. Uh, and hopefully um, when you're tempted to plot a lot of dimensions, you can use parallel coordinates or when you are tempted to use a radar chart, maybe also try out the parallel coordinates visualization time. And with that, um, I'll pass it back to you, John. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. That was a great review of the parallel coordinates plot. Great ways to see different techniques to show relationships in your data. And also the, the offsetting ways in which we can show something like using the radar plot or using the parallel coordinates plot. So come back tomorrow and we'll learn more about ways to show relationships in your data. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.